good morning uh, greetings from bms college of engineering bangalore uh, this is the third module on a uh, representation of a uh, discrete time lti system in the first module on discrete time lti systems we have seen different methods of representing the lti systems uh, which uh, we recall as representing the system by the impulse response h of n by the transfer system transfer function uh, h of z uh, by the pole zero plot the frequency response uh, h of omega we also had the uh, block diagram representation and we have the difference equation the constant coefficient difference equation method of representing the uh, discrete time lti system here we normally use the convention that we have the system which has an input uh, in input x of n we get the output y n and one way of representing the system is by the system's impulse response h of n this these different methods moving from one method to the other is what we have seen in module one in the second module we saw specific examples of uh, FIR systems, finite impulse response systems, where HN was of finite duration. In this third module, we are going to see uh, in uh, IIR systems. So, so we have uh, we have the in input x of n. We have the system, discrete time LTI system with an impulse response HN, and say the output is y n. And we are going to consider infinite impulse response uh, systems that so our impulse response HN is going to be of uh, infinite duration. Because the response is of infinite duration, it becomes convenient to represent such systems by other methods and not uh, just by the impulse response. For example, let us say uh, h of z h of z is one method of representing the system we'll take a specific example say h of z uh, is 1 minus say 0 0.8 z inverse so now this, let us say this is the system given to us this is the first example that we take now what we will try is we will try to represent this system uh, in different methods and we'll also uh, try to comment on the system properties. So we will classify the system based after observing its representation in different methods. So given this uh, transfer function h of z, uh, I can write it uh, in, in positive parts of z. So I just multiply the numerator and denominator by uh, z and what I get is this. So this becomes convenient for having the pole zero plot. So now if I take my first representation as say the pole zero plot, pole zero plot, what I have is, uh, this is my z plane, the real axis, the imaginary axis, I have a zero, I have a zero at z equal to zero, and I have a pole, I have a pole at z equal to 0.8. So 0 0.8. Normally, when we when we plot uh, the pole zero plot uh, of a discrete time system, we also have the unit circle just to see where the circle uh, circle lies on the z plane. So we we now have an observation that the pole is inside the unit circle. Pole is inside the unit circle. Pole is inside the unit circle. So we will uh, we will see whether the system is stable or unstable after looking at the impulse response. So we will keep that on hold, and now we will go to uh, go to the other method of another method of representing the same system. So the system that we have is uh, let's uh, let's take the let's take the same, and let's go in for another method of representing the same system the same IIR system. So now let us uh, take the second method of representing, let us say the difference equation. Let us look at the difference equation method of representing. So now what I have is H 
h of z is nothing but y of z by x of z and this is equal to 1 by 1 minus 0 0.8 z inverse uh, which then becomes 1 minus 0 0.8 z inverse uh, into y of z equal to x of z or y of z uh, equal to x of z plus 0 0.8 z inverse by of z. So I'm just rearranging the terms. I keep y z term on the left hand side and then I have on the right hand side x of z a plus 0 0.8 z inverse y z. So that then becomes if I now to get the difference equation I take the inverse uh, inverse z transform. Inverse z transform and we know that a signal x of n minus 1 I have the z transform z inverse x of z and hence the inverse z transform taking the inverse z transform of the above we get the difference equation given by y n equal to x of n plus 0 0.8 y of n minus 1 this becomes the difference equation representation of the of the system so this, this is the second method. So now let me move to the another method of representing and which is uh, the impulse response. Impulse response is also uh, one of the methods of representing the, const, uh, the discrete time LTI system. So now uh, what, what we shall do is we'll consider, uh, we'll consider this sequence, the difference equation given by yn equal to x of n plus 0 0.8 y of n minus 1 and and now i keep my i want to compute the impulse response so my input xn uh, xn is all all zeros and it is one only at n equal to zero so given this input as my impulse unit impulse so now my output say i want to compute y zero I put n equal to 0 in the above expression and then what I get is y of 0 equal to uh, x of 0 plus 0 0.8 y of minus 1 uh, which makes it x of 0 is a 1 and y of minus 1 uh, let assuming the system is uh, initially relaxed so let us say this is 0 assuming y of 0 so I now have my y 0 as 1. Now in the same equation I put n equal to 1 and then that will give me y1. n equal to 1 now it will become x of 1 plus 0 0.8 y of 0 and how much is that? <coughs> Sorry x of 1 is a 0 because my input is an unit impulse and at any n equal to 1 it's a 0 so plus x of 2 plus 0 0.8 y of 1 and that is equal to once again x of 2 is a 0 plus 0 0.8 into y1 <coughs> that is 0 0.8 so this becomes 0 0.8 whole square now similarly if i put n equal to 3 we are going to get y of 3 equal to x of 3 plus 0 0.8 into y of 2 and that to 0 plus uh, 0 0.8 into y y of 2 is 0 0.8 whole square so this becomes 0 0.8 whole cube and i can now generalize generalize and write my above result as y of n is equal to 0 0.8 to the power of n for n greater than or equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. So if I try to plot this, this is my impulse response h of n. As we find, it is of infinite duration. <coughs> if I try to plot uh, the impulse response, this is not going to, uh, it's, it's not going to be of finite duration. n equal to 0, it's a 1. n equal to 1, it's 0 0.8. Uh, n equal to 2 is 0 0.8 square, uh, n equal to 3, n equal to 4 and so on. It keeps going 
and it is zero for n less than zero. So what is the what is the conclusion? It is an infinite impulse response system because the duration is infinite. Now, from the impulse response, we know that we can comment on the stability of the system. If I compute sigma n equal to 0 to infinity mod h of n, what I get is sigma n equal to 0 to infinity, uh, 0 0.1 to the power of n. And since 0.8 is less than 1, uh, this becomes 1 minus 0 0.8, and that is 1 by 0 0.2, and that becomes 5. So my summation to infinite terms is finite. This sum is finite. And because the sum is finite, because a mod h of n, uh, n equal to say 0 to infinity is finite, is finite, the system is, uh, we, we conclude that the system is stable. So from the impulse response, I can comment on the stability of the system and we, we observe that the given, uh, given system is a stable system. So now having seen the impulse response, let us now see uh, the block diagram representation of the system. The block diagram representation. So once again, we consider uh, the, uh, say the block diagram. diagram representation. So I have my y of n equal to x of n uh, plus 0 0.8 y of n minus 1. This is my uh, given difference equation. So if I want to implement, it's a first order system. So I have always when I draw my system, my input is xn and my output is yn. And I have two terms that are uh, that are present. One is xn and the other is yn minus 1. So I take yn minus 1. And how do I get yn minus 1? I pass it through one delay element and then I get a yn minus 1. And the gain is 0 0.8 and then, and then I get this. So this is the block diagram implementation of the given system. So next we have one more uh, representation. And that is the frequency response h of omega. h of omega, the, the frequency response of the, of the system. So this becomes easy when I consider my transfer function h of z given by 1 minus 0.8 z inverse. <coughs> and we know that the frequency response h of omega is uh, h of z at uh, z equal to uh, e bar j omega. And so that becomes that becomes 1 by 1 minus 0 0.8 uh, e to the power of minus j omega. And uh, I, I can uh, express it as uh, say 1 minus uh, 0 0.8 into cos omega minus j sine omega. And, and then I can compute the magnitude and the phase response, but uh, computation becomes easier. Let me uh, let me take the help of MATLAB uh, in evaluating this, evaluating this expression. So to get the magnitude and the phase response of this of this system. So mod we'll try to get mod h of omega and the phase response. So let's uh, take the help of MATLAB. So uh, I have my uh, h of omega. Let, let me first define the variable omega. The linearly uh, linearly spaced uh, in the interval minus pi to pi. And let us take 100 values because um, just for having a, a smooth curve. And what is my h of omega? h of omega is given by 1 divided by uh, 1 minus 0 0.8 into e to the power of minus j omega. And to plot the magnitude response, 
Uh, I I need to just omega versus absolute value of h omega. So this is our uh, magnitude response. As we find, uh, it's uh, it's passing the low frequency components. It tapers towards the end. And, and hence we have the magnitude response. Let's plot the magnitude response. And what's the maximum value of the magnitude response? It's taking five. So as we saw the summation of uh, impulse response HN uh, was also five. So H of zero is usually sigma H of N and we get the same result. So if I plot it from minus pi uh, to say, say plus pi, I am having the response that goes to a maximum of five, it's symmetric and it tapers to this. So this is my magnitude response and let's also try to draw the phase response. Omega versus angle And this is my uh, phase response and all uh, all function that uh, yes. So for the same interval, if I draw the uh, the phase response, this is what I get. Say minus pi uh, to pi. Uh, it's going something. This is omega and angle H of omega in uh, in radians. So this is this is the plot, and from this plot, when when I look at the interval from minus pi to plus pi, because it's having a maximum value around zero, tapering towards pi, we we can classify the system as it's a high pass filter. Sorry, it's a low pass filter. It's a low pass filter because. Uh, the uh, the maximum occurs around the center and it decreases. We we'll, uh, let us also look at the periodicity of this of this uh, frequency response. So for that, let me just uh, re re redefine my omega. Instead of going from the interval minus pi to plus pi, let let me make it as say minus a uh, minus two pi to two plus two pi. And once again, uh, let me compute H omega. And then let me plot the magnitude, a uh, magnitude spectrum. And this is my magnitude spectrum. Sorry, I've plotted the phase spectrum. Let me plot the magnitude spectrum. So it is uh, it is periodic. So in the interval minus zero to two pi, whatever I'm getting in interval zero to two pi, I'm getting the same uh, same uh, response in the interval minus two pi to zero. So we we can see that the the frequency response of the system is periodic. And this is we know we, we just wanted to see it uh, because it's easier to see when we have some tool that does the computation. Two pi. 3 pi. So if I were to plot, it's going to go in this manner. Say minus 3 pi, minus 2 pi. And similarly, the phase response is also going to be periodic. So from the frequency response of the system, we can classify about whether the, uh, from the frequency characteristic, we can classify the type of the filter. So, no, so to summarize, uh, the given system, what what we have found is, of course, it is an IIR system, and it is stable because the impulse response is absolute summable. The uh, the pole uh, lies within the unit circle, within the unit circle, and from the frequency response, we find that it is a low pass filter, and the frequency response is periodic periodic with period 2 pi. These are our observations. 
So now we, we go back to our pole zero plot that we had plotted. And then uh, since we found that the system was stable, uh, we will now comment that the pole lies inside the unit circle. And this is resulting in a, in a stable system. Why is this sta stable? Because we found the same by looking at the, by observing the impulse response. So this completes, uh, completes the first example. So now let's take uh, one more example. Let's take another example. Say the second example. Now let me take uh, the, the transfer. Let us say we are given the transfer function of the system h of z uh, equal to say uh, 1 minus 1.2 z inverse. So now I have I have changed a constant over here and this I have taken as my transfer function. So let's repeat all of the above that we have seen and try to classify the system. So as, as the first case we will take we'll try to compute the uh, difference equation. The difference equation of the system and how do we get that? So now we have h of z which is nothing but y z by x of z is equal to 1 by 1 minus 1.2 z inverse or 1 minus 1.2 z inverse into y of z equal to x of z or y of z equal to x of z plus 1.2 z, z inverse. Now to get the difference equation, I take the inverse z transform. inverse the transform and then what I get is y of n equal to x of n plus 1.2 sorry this is 1 minus z inverse y z 1 minus 1 1.2 y of n minus 1. So this is my uh, difference equation of the given system. Now let me uh, let me try to uh, get the impulse response h n. We have got a difference equation. Let us try to get the uh, get the impulse response of the system. To get the impulse response of the system, I need to uh, consider my input x of n uh, is an unit impulse uh, given by uh, say all zeros and it's 1 at n equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. So now let me put n equal to 0 in the above equation and then I will get my output y of n is equal to x of 0. x of 0 plus 1.2 y minus 1. And that is x of 0 is a 1 plus by assuming the system is initially relaxed, the so y of minus 1 is a 0. So I have y 0 as 1. Next, I put n equal to 1. That gives me y1 equal to x of 1, that is a 0. x of 1 plus 1 1.2 y of 0, which is 0 plus 1.2 into y0 is 1, so I have 1.2. Next, I put n equal to 2. And so what is my yn? It is x of 2 plus 1.2 y minus 1. This is a 0 plus 1.2 y minus 1 is also uh, 1.2 and so I have 1.2 whole square. Proceeding this way, we can generalize that yn, yn is 1.2 to the power of n and for n greater than or equal to 0 or and hence we have this is nothing but the impulse response h of n is equal to 1.2 to the power of n or I can multiply it by u n so that implies that this is valid for n greater than or equal to 0 the unit step function. Now if I try to plot the impulse response what happens? For n equal to 0 it is it is 1, 1. For n equal to 1, 
it is 1.2 for n equal to 2 it is 1.2 square for n equal to 3 1.3 cube and so on n equal to 4 1. Point, 1.2 yes 1.2 to the power of 4 and so on and so what we find and of course it is 0 for n less than 0 and and hence what is our observation now it is it is definitely an infinite impulse response system because the duration duration of the impulse response is infinite duration is uh, is infinite how about the stability of the system? If I do sigma mod h of n, say n equal to minus infinity to infinity, or which in this case becomes n equal to zero to infinity, this is infinite. This cannot be, cannot be summed. And hence we conclude that the system is unstable. So by looking at the impulse response of the system, we are able to comment on the stability of the system and the system is unstable. So now let's go to the other representation, let us say the pole zero plot. So we, have, we are given h of z is equal to 1 by 1 minus 1.2 z inverse or which is nothing but z by z minus 1.2. And if I try to draw the pole zero plot, the, the z plane, the real axis, the imaginary axis, I have a zero, I have a zero at, uh, at n equal to zero, z equal to zero, and I, ha I have a pole at z equal to uh, 1.2. I have a pole and z equal to 1.2. Now, and if I want to draw my uh, unit circle, as I mentioned, whenever uh, we plot the uh, pole zero plot, uh, we always locate the uh, unit circle. So by immediately looking at the pole zero plot, what I find is my pole is outside the unit circle, and hence the system is unstable. And we could also relate it with the impulse response that we have just computed. And from the pole zero plot, we can comment on the uh, stability of the system. And so what's our conclusion? Since the pole is outside the unit circle, outside the unit circle, the system is unstable. The system is unstable. So we will uh, move further. And now, yes, uh, sorry for the disturbance. So now we'll continue. Let's try to get the, uh, get the block diagram implementation of the, of the same circuit, of the same system. So now uh, to implement it, uh, as, as usual, we always start uh, with, uh, with the input xn on the left hand side. And by observing uh, the above system, and we have the output yn. And the output yn is the sum of two terms. One is the input xn and the output with, with unit delay. And the system gain, I mean, the branch gain being 1.2. So this is the implementation of the uh, given uh, IIR system. So we just have one more representation uh, left, and that is, let us try to get the frequency response of the system H of omega. So what we have is H of Z is given by 1 by 1 minus 1.2 Z inverse, uh, which is, uh, and we, to get the frequency response, we know that we replace uh, h of z by uh, at by z z equal to e bar j omega and hence what we have is h of omega equal to 1 by 1 minus 1.2 e bar minus j omega though we can compute it manually it takes some time 
So once again, uh, I will take the help of MATLAB in computing the frequency response of, of the system. So let me define my omega uh, in the interval, let us say minus, uh, minus pi to plus pi. minus pi to plus pi and what is my h of omega now uh, i i now have it as one uh, divided by one minus uh, 1.2 it's a dot divide because i want to do a point wise division this is a vector so i have a dot my one minus 1.2 that's all and so now let me compute uh, let me plot the plot the magnitude response of the system. So we see the magnitude response. This, this is my uh, uh, magnitude response of the, uh, of the filter. Filter, so from the, from the magnitude response, uh, what we can we can identify this it still look it, it still has the characteristics of uh, of a low pass filter so we can identify this as a low pass filter from the uh, magnitude response of the system and let us look at the phase response of the of the same system If I look at the phase response, this is my phase response of the system. And this is the uh, phase response of the uh, given system, angle H of omega. So what, what we find is from the, from the uh, frequency response, we are able to identify it as a low pass filter. But the system is, uh, is unstable. We have seen from the impulse response, this is an unstable system. And hence, this system cannot be realized and has no physical significance as far as the filter design is concerned. We cannot continue with these type of systems which have a pole outside the unit circle or which are unstable. So this computing the frequency response does not have any physical significance, although it gives the response of a, of a uh, low pass filter. So now let's take another example. For the third example, uh, let's take uh, example three. Let, let me take H of Z equal to one by one plus say 0 0.6 z inverse so now for this system when i when i compute the computes let us say the difference equation if i if i compute the difference equation i'm going to have y z by x of z equal to one by one plus 0 0.6 z inverse uh, which is nothing but one plus 0 0.6 z inverse into y of z equal to x of z or y of z plus 0 0.6 z inverse y z equal to x of z which then gives me y of z equal to x of z minus 0 0.6 z inverse Y, Z. Now taking the inverse uh, inverse Z transform, we get the difference equation as Y of N equal to X of N minus 0 0.6 Z, 0 0.6 Y of N minus 1. This becomes my difference equation of the given, uh, given system. From the difference equation, I can always compute the impulse response. So if I want to compute the impulse response of the system, I need to put uh, n equal to, so my input, 
delta n uh, if if now all zeros it's one at n equal to zero and again zero otherwise so putting n equal to zero in the above expression i get my h of zero or say y zero y zero as a uh, one minus 0.6 into say system was initially relaxed so i get y0 as 1 next i put n equal to 1 and what i get is y of 1 equal to x of 1 minus 0.6 into y of 1 so 1 minus 1 that is a 0 and that makes it minus minus 0 0.6 because x of 1 is a 0 and y 0 is a 1. Putting n equal to 2, I get y of 2 equal to x of 2 minus 0 0.6 y 1 and that is now x of 2 is a 0 and x of is a 0 and y 1 is 0 0.6 so minus 0 0.6 into minus 0 0.6 so what I get is minus 0 0.6 whole square. Similarly, when I put n equal to 3, I am going to get y of 3 as minus uh, 0 0.6 whole cube. So generalizing the above result, we, have, we now have my output y n given by minus 0 0.6 to the power of n for n greater than or equal to 0. And this output we have computed for a unit uh, uh, impulse input and hence the output is also known as the impulse response h of n. And what is h of n now? Minus 0 0.6 to the power of n u n. <coughs> Sorry. So if I if I attempt to sketch the uh, sketch the impulse response, what I have is for n equal to zero, it is a one. For n equal to one, it is minus 0 0.6. For n equal to two, 0 0.6 whole square then minus 0 0.6 whole cube <coughs> and 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 so on so for n equal to 5, it's going to be 0 for minus 0 0.6 to the power of 5, and so on. And this is what we have, the impulse response. From the impulse response, we can always comment on the stability of the system and how is the how do we compute? We need to compute n equal to the summation minus infinity to infinity h of n, the absolute value. In this case, it becomes because uh, it's uh, it's a uh, causal system and in this example we are getting for only n greater than zero so mod hn and this becomes sigma n equal to zero to infinity minus or it minus or absolute value so it becomes 0 0.6 uh, to the power of n and which is nothing but one by 1 minus 0 0.6 a geometric progression with the term being less than 1 and hence uh, it is 1 by uh, 0.4 and uh, that is 2.5 so this is finite the sum is finite and hence the system is stable so from the uh, from the impulse response looking at the uh, because the impulse response is absolute summable uh, we have the result as uh, as a stable system. Now let us get the pole zero plot. So my h of z was given by 1 by uh, 1 1 by 1 plus 0.6 z inverse 1 by 1 uh, plus 0.6 z inverse which is nothing but z by z plus 0 0.6 so if i if i try to get the pole zero plot what i have is i have the z plane z plane the real and this is the imaginary and then i always need to sketch the draw the unit circle 
and then let me put my poles and zeros. I have a zero at z equal to zero, and I have a pole at z equal to minus 0.6. So I have a pole at uh, minus 0.6. So the pole is in uh, pole is within the unit circle, and hence the system is stable. And we got this even from the impulse response, we got the system as uh, as stable. So this is a stable system. And of course, now if I want to uh, the I can next try to get the uh, get the block diagram representation. The block diagram representation of the of the system. For this, I have my difference equation y n equal to uh, x of n minus 0.6 y of n minus 1. And hence the plot, the implementation now becomes uh, x of n output y n with the feedback a first order system we are having one delay and the branch gain being minus 0 0.6 so this is the block diagram implementation and next we shall have a look at the frequency response of the system h of omega so let's try to get the frequency response of the system and we have h of z given by 1 plus 0 0.6 z inverse and hence I have my h of omega given by 1 uh, plus 0 0.6 e to the power of minus j omega. So we'll again take the help of MATLAB in evaluating the, <coughs> the frequency response of the system. Uh, let me define omega in the same interval, say minus pi to pi. And my h of omega in, in this case it is 1 uh, plus 0 0.6 uh, into e to the power of minus j omega and let me plot the magnitude response so plot omega versus the uh, absolute value of h of omega and let's look at the uh, response so what we have is the, the magnitude is, uh, is zero around is low around zero it increases to a maximum value of 2.5 at, at at pi so it's it's going to it's increasing towards pi and hence we immediately recognize this as a as a high pass filter so this uh, Having seen a few examples of first order IIR systems, let us now take an example of a second order IIR system. Let's consider a system whose uh, Z transform or the system transfer function is given by the one minus Z inverse plus 0 0.5 z power minus 2. Now we'll once again uh, try to represent the same system in, in different methods and try to arrive at suitable conclusions. So to start off, uh, let us consider the, the difference equation of the system. So we have, uh, we have the difference equation given by So I have it as 1 minus z inverse plus 0 0.5 z power minus 2 uh, into y of z equal to x of z. Or uh, when I keep only uh, my y z term to the left hand side and take all other terms to the right hand side, what I get is uh, plus z inverse y z minus 0 0.5 z power minus 2 y z. Now taking the inverse that transform, inverse that transform of the above, we get the system difference equation given by y z equal to y of n equal to x of n uh, plus y of n minus 1 minus 0 0.5 y of n minus 2. So this is our uh, difference equation.
So we have moved from the transfer function to the difference equation. Uh, let's take uh, another method of representing the same. Uh, let's try to get the uh, system impulse response. Let's try to get the system impulse response H of n, the impulse response of the of the same system. So now what we do is uh, we uh, we consider our input x of n uh, is the unit impulse say delta n, which is one for n equal to zero and zero otherwise. And now we move proceed with putting different values of n, uh, n equal to zero in the above difference equation. Uh, yes, putting n equal to zero, zero we have uh, we have y of 0 equal to x of 0 plus y minus 1 minus 0 0.5 y minus 2. And this makes it x of 0 is a 1, uh, is a 1. And all these are y minus 1 is a 0, y minus 2 is a 0. And hence we get, uh, we get y0 as 1. Similarly, I can, I can put uh, say n equal to 1 and I, I can get the value of the output for n equal to 1. This becomes n equal to x of 1 uh, plus y of 0 minus 0 0.5 y of minus 1. And once again, we have x of 1 is 0, y of minus 1 is 0 and y 0 we got it as, we got it as a 1 and hence uh, and hence y1, uh, y1 is a 1. We can proceed in a similar manner and try to get the impulse response, uh, response h of n, uh, which uh, will, uh, will uh, turn out to be, uh, let's, take, uh, let's take the uh, help of MATLAB uh, to, compute, uh, to compute the impulse response in this case. I have my numerator polynomial as one, and and my denominator polynomial in this example is one minus one, uh, zero point five. And let me let let us say we want to get the impulse response for uh, this uh, system. Say we, we are looking forward to 10, 10 values. So we get the uh, get the impulse response as uh, 1, 1, 0 0.50 minus 0.25 minus 0.25, uh, 0, 0. 0.0625, etc. So uh, because it's, it's, it's similar, proceeding in a similar manner, we can get the result. I get the get the impulse response as 1, 1, uh, 0 0.5, 0, minus 0 0.25, minus 0 0.25, 0, and so on. And this is this is an high IR system, and hence the duration is going to be infinite. And when I sketch the result, what I have is 1, 1. Uh, 0 0.5, 0, minus 0 0.25, minus 0 0.25, 0, uh, 0 0.0625, and, and so on. This is my impulse response HN. Now, by observing the impulse response, what we find is, what we find is, since the, uh, with increasing N, uh, the magnitude is reducing, and hence we can, we can conclude that sigma mod HN uh, is going to be finite. And because it is finite, the system is stable. So even though the impulse response is of infinite duration, the system is stable. So from the impulse response, we are able to comment on the stability of the system. Let's go to another, another method of representing the same system and let's consider the, the pole zero plot. Pole zero plot. So here I have, I have the Z plane the z plane, the real axis, the imaginary axis. And though I can do it manually, let me once again take the help of MATLAB to get the roots of my polynomial.
uh, my numerator is a one. So let me compute the roots of the of the denominator polynomial, uh, which we just now defined as uh, as one minus one and 0.5. So we we find that the roots of the denominator are uh, 0.5 plus or minus 0.5 j. So I have my my roots or roots of my denominator or my poles are located at uh, at uh, 0 0.5 plus or minus 0.5 j. So I have I have a pole at uh, 0.5. Uh, plus 0.5j and I have another pole at 0.5 minus 0.5j and as usual we always draw the unit circle uh, unit circle and, and what we find is in this example the poles we have two poles and the two poles are uh, within the unit circle and hence uh, and hence uh, the system is the system is stable so Principle and of course the system will also have uh, will have two uh, two zeros uh, second order system two zeros both located at the origin both located at the origin and hence uh, because because uh, the the poles poles lie uh, within the unit circle unit circle the system is stable. And we are able to get the same conclusion by looking at the impulse response as well. So now uh, let's uh, let's move on uh, to another method of representing that is the pole zero, uh, that is the uh, block diagram implementation. And for this, uh, let us consider the difference equation of the of the system. Uh, let's consider the difference equation of the system and try to get the uh, get the block diagram implementation. Let's get the uh, block block diagram implementation of the same system. And what we get is, uh, as usual, we have uh, the input on the left hand side, and 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 we have an adder, and the output is y of n. And if you see, uh, to the output is comprising uh, one delay element that gives me y n minus one. The so output of this delay element is going to be y n minus one, and this has a gain of plus one. We have one more delay element. So this output is going to be y n minus two, and this gets multiplied. This is having a multiplying a, a branch gain of minus zero point five. So this is the block diagram implementation. So let's uh, let us now try to compute the uh, the frequency response of the system. The, the frequency response of the of the system. So what we have is uh, we have h of z is given by one by one minus z inverse plus 0 0.5 z power minus 2. This is the system that is given to us. And we also know that the frequency response h of omega is given by uh, h of z at z equal to e to the power of j omega. And hence, and hence in this example, uh, h of omega is given by 1 by 1 minus e power minus j omega plus 0 0.5 e to the power of minus 2j omega. Now I can vary omega for different uh, values and then try to get the uh, frequency response h omega. And we know that this frequency response is going to be uh, periodic. Uh, let's compute uh, for the interval, say minus pi to uh, minus pi to plus pi. And once again, uh, for convenience, we can do it manually. It's not, uh, it, takes, uh, it takes some time. Uh, but uh, 
let me take the help of MATLAB uh, to compute the, uh, the phase response as well, the magnitude and the phase response. So let me uh, let me define my omega. Uh, let me define. Uh, minus uh, minus pi to pi, and let us say I consider 50 values. I consider the interval uh, minus pi to pi uh, 50 values, and my h of omega. Uh, is going to be 1 divided by 1 minus e to the power of minus j omega plus 0 0.5 into e to the power of minus 2j omega. And let's plot this response. The magnitude response, absolute value of H of omega. Uh, this is what uh, we have as the magnitude response. And how is it? In the interval minus pi to plus pi, uh, we are having uh, tapering, and it is uh, it, we can recognize this uh, this system as a uh, as a uh, low pass filter because it's having a higher value towards this uh, for around zero and decreases as uh, omega increases. Similarly, now if I want to look at the uh, phase plot, uh, I need to consider the angle, and if I uh, let me have the angle in degrees. So I multiply it by 180 by 5. I get the phase plot in uh, degrees. And this is what we find the phase plot. As usual, it's an odd function, uh, odd function of omega. So let's uh, let's get the magnitude and the and the phase response. So it uh, it uh, it it starts with a lower value, rises, and of course it's not a constant. Uh, there is a fall and if the phase response is something like this, so this way, given any system, we can uh, we can convert it to any other form. And uh, by looking at the phase response, we recognize this as a low pass filter. Not a very good low pass filter because it does have the rise and the fall, but uh, it it's, it resembles a low pass filter. So. To summarize the learnings of uh, this lecture, uh, we have seen how to move from uh, one form of representation. Mainly, we have considered moving from the system transfer function H of Z uh, to the impulse response uh, to the pole zero plot to the block diagram diagram representation uh, to the difference equation and to the frequency response h of omega and from the impulse response h and we can comment on the stability of the system uh, while from the pole zero plot also we can comment on the stability and both methods will give the same result uh, the block diagram help us have a practical implementation of the given system the difference equation is another method of representing and from the frequency response we can comment on the system being a low pass or a high pass or any other type of filter. So we have considered simple examples uh, because we are trying to